When you're healing from emotional abuse, it can be a little bit difficult to know where you stand. You can have good days and then suddenly you're rocked with a terrible day where you can't stop thinking about the abusive person in your life. This is because recovery is never a straight line. And there's also something called the trauma bond that's a natural reaction to the abuse you've endured. You may have heard of the trauma bond before. In this video, we're just gonna do a quick recap of what it is exactly. And then we're gonna get into the six signs that you may still be in the trauma bond. And then at the end, naturally, we're going to talk about what to do if you are still in the trauma bond. We're gonna get right to it now, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Common Ego Community. My name is Christina, and on this channel, we talk about narcissistic abuse, its connection with spirituality, and we attempt to answer the question, where do we go from here? So if that all sounds good to you, be sure you're subscribed. And if you're already subscribed, thank you and welcome back. Today we're digging into the trauma bond with six signs you may still be in it. But first we're gonna do a quick recap on what the trauma bond is. So what is the trauma bond? Trauma bonding refers to an unhealthy attachment that takes place when you're in a relationship with somebody who is emotionally abusive. And it usually happens as a result of intermittent reinforcement. So it's something that looks like love and then it's abuse, and then it looks like love again, and then it's abuse. And your brain gets addicted to that cocktail of cortisol and oxytocin, and there's a whole lot of other neurochemicals that are involved in the process. But essentially, you begin to associate all this upheaval with love. And this keeps you going back to the emotionally abusive person in your life. And I have to say, I really wanted to do this recap for you, for even for the people who know what the trauma bond is, because it's so, so incredibly important for your healing to understand that this is all natural. So if you've gone back to an abusive person, you know, maybe the people in your life are calling you crazy. How could you do that? This person is terrible to you. And, and you've gone back to them. Understand that it's not your fault. The trauma bond is real. And it is what causes us to have trouble making logical decisions when it comes to these emotionally abusive people. So I have a video on what happens in the brain with the trauma bond, and you may find that interesting. So I'm gonna link that in the card and the description below. And we're gonna jump straight into the six signs that you may still be in the trauma bond. So the first sign is that you're holding hope that the narcissist is going to come back, or you're holding space for the narcissist in your life. Now, this is an interesting one. If you're holding hope that the narcissist is going to come back, you, you probably know it. on some level you would be happy if that person came back to you. And this may even be something that fluctuates. Some days you're good without this person and other days you want this person to come back. But if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling that way consistently or really ever, there's a good chance you're still in the trauma bond. Now, when I talk about holding space for a narcissist, this is kind of where it gets interesting, and this may be telling of your emotions that you're not consciously aware of. So if you're holding off on a big move or a big life change, because maybe you know it's something that the narcissist wouldn't approve of, or maybe the move would take you far away from the narcissist, these are signs that whether you realize it or not, you may be holding space for that person to come back. And if you can recognize that you're doing this in your life, you're probably still in the trauma bond. So the second sign that you're still in the trauma bond is that you're still falling for the love bombing. So whether it's a family member or an ex that comes back and they come back all sweet and nice and trying to either be your best friend or long lost love, and it seems genuine and you feel, maybe you didn't feel before like you missed this person, maybe you felt like you were good, but then they come back and they have this sad story about how much they've missed you and you believe it. After all you've been through, if you know that this person has been emotionally abusive to you, and if you're relatively sure that this person is likely a narcissist or another cluster B personality, yet you're still considering going back to this person because they seem so genuine, there's a chance you may still be in the trauma bond. The third sign that you may be in the trauma bond is that you're making excuses for the narcissist. Now, this is super common when you're in the relationship with the narcissist, but it can carry over afterwards, and it often does. So it's very difficult for many of us who have been in these relationships to recognize that what has been happening is actually abuse and to label it as abuse. 
But once you can do that, it's very freeing because you can look at things like the trauma bond and you can understand that your reactions to what happened in this relationship are completely natural and that virtually everyone in these relationships has a similar reaction. So you can let yourself off the hook for so many things, but the key is to recognize it as abuse. If it has all the signs of abuse, yet you're taking responsibility for any part of it, you may still be in the trauma bond. So the fourth sign that you may still be in the trauma bond is that you feel energetically or spiritually tied to this person. And I talked about this in my recent video about the new supply and what happens there. And there's something that I call the emotional haze. And this is very common with people who identify as empaths. What happens is the lines get blurred between your energetic field and your emotions and the other person. So they can very easily pull your strings, whether they're in front of you or even if it's from afar. You could have gotten no contact with this person, but yet they post something on social media and your emotions bubble up and you almost have no control over what's happening. So they're still pulling your emotional strings, even though they're not really in your life. So if this is happening, there's a very good chance you're still in the trauma bond. And when I talk about an energetic or spiritual connection, this can often happen when you think about the person and suddenly they text or call you out of nowhere. You haven't heard from them in ages, but you just maybe you had a dream about them or something in the day reminded you of them and they call or text or show up somewhere. If things like this are happening, and if you feel like you're still emotionally or energetically tethered to this person, it's very important to intentionally detach. Set the intention to detach. And whenever your emotions are triggered, whenever this person is triggering you from afar or even just by your thoughts, remind yourself that everything you need to heal is right here. And if you've gone no contact with this person, they're out. Even if you're successfully employing gray rock, you're, you're essentially out. And what you have to deal with is here and you can deal with the buttons they're pushing, but it's all here and it's not there. Set that intention to detach. So the fifth sign that you may still be in the trauma bond is that you spend a lot of time thinking about this emotionally abusive person. And now first I want to say that there are some benefits to recounting some things that have happened if you're doing it for the purposes of healing. But if it feels like your thoughts are running amok and you're constantly reminded of things that cause you to recount past events and injustices, and every time you do, it hurts you again, as if you were still in that situation, then you're likely in the trauma bond. The sixth sign that you're still in the trauma bond is that you're subscribed to that person's reality. And I talked about this in detail in my video about the new supply. So you can see something that's happening right in front of your face. And you can see, you can probably recognize that what's happening is extremely unhealthy. And as I described in the video, from an objective perspective, it looks like a train wreck. But when you're emotionally tied to this person, you have trouble seeing it for what it is. You have trouble seeing the reality for reality. What you see is what the narcissist wants you to see when you're still in the trauma bond. So if you're still subscribed to their reality, there's a good chance you're still trauma bonded. So if you cannot relate to any one of these six things, congratulations, you've made it to the other side. And if you can relate to them, don't worry, because guess what? Every one of us who does not relate to any of these six things once did very much so. So this is all a natural part of the healing process. And where you are right now is perfect. It is where you're meant to be. And the fact that you're watching these videos and the fact that you're learning about narcissism and you're learning about healing and about emotional abuse and about the trauma bond means that you are ready to accelerate your healing. I can tell you from my own experience, just learning that the trauma bond was a thing was incredibly, incredibly valuable to me in my journey. Knowing that I didn't have to beat myself up over all the things that I was thinking and, and wanting to go back to an abusive person or going back to an abusive person. I didn't, I didn't have to do that. There was a reason. And it's actually a logical reason why this happens. 
So if you are still in the trauma bond, I suggest you continue watching videos about narcissistic abuse, emotional abuse, and recovery. Learn what you can, know you're not alone, and know that you have nothing to be ashamed of. And also, you should know that everyone gets to the end in their own time. Everyone heals in their own time. And again, recovery is never a straight line. So don't let anybody tell you that you're taking too long to get over it or you should be in a, a different place right now. Where you are right now is where you need to be. The healing process in itself is a journey and you're going to get so much out of this. So there's no need to try to rush it. There's no need to try to compare yourself to anyone else. Focus on you, focus on healing and find the support you need. This is an incredibly supportive community. I absolutely love the community that's forming here. So feel free to make comments, ask for help, ask questions. I answer a lot of the comments. I can't always get to all of them, but a lot of people in this community, we've, we've all been here. We've all been in this place. So whether you're currently in this place or you're, you're out, there's value to making connections. Support is so incredibly important in this process. It's important to know that you're not alone. So if you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. And I will see you next time.